All right, guys, today we are going to be learning about the ratio and the root tests for section 10.7. So these are the last two tests that we learn whenever we're trying to figure out the convergence or divergence of series. And they're actually really popular for all of the Calc 2 students because people just love to use these two tests. They're very easy and uh, they give very definitive results a lot of the time. So let's get into it. Before we get started, let's consider um, some some things that you may have forgotten about various types of limits and factorials. So first of all, uh, the limit as k approaches infinity of k plus 1 over k to the kth power. Remember that that could be rewritten as just 1 plus 1 over k all raised to the kth power. Move the limit out front. Uh, if we take the limit of this thing, hopefully you guys remember that this is equal to e. And if we flip it, so now if it's k over k plus 1 raised to the kth power, this is just 1 over e, or just e to the negative 1 power. Uh, and similarly, as we learned a few sections ago, if you put an a and a b in these spots, you could write this limit here, k plus a over k to the bk power, as e to the ab power. All of these things if you ever encounter them in this section, or in any section for that matter, can be shown without proof. You don't need to show uh, where these come from, you can just claim that they are true. This last one, however, the limit is k approaches infinity of k to the 1 over k. This one you would have to prove if you want to show it on an exam or on a quiz or something like that. Uh, and the answer to this one is actually 1. And we'll go through the proof of that on the next slide. So these are just some things that you might encounter throughout this section, so just keep those in mind. Okay, so now let's consider um, factorials. So we've encountered a little bit of factorials before, but let's just review some things. Uh, 7 factorial is defined to be just 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Remember, it is whatever number is in the factorial times every integer smaller than it. So k factorial, for a general k, think about what that's going to be. That will be k times k minus 1, the next smallest integer, times k minus 2, times 3 times 2 times 1, you know, whatever however small we need this to be. So if k was 11, it would be 11 times 11 minus 1 times 11 minus 2, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? So if we are trying to calculate a fraction of factorials, 11 factorial over 9 factorial, let's just write it out. This would be 11 uh, times 10 times 9 times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. And then on bottom we have 9 factorial, which is just 9 times 8, times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. And as you might notice, um, a lot of this cancels out. So these 9s cancel, the 8s cancel, 7s, the 6s, the 5s, the 4s, the 3s, the 2s, and the 1s. So what's left is just 11 times 10. So this entire thing is just equal to 110. Um, so in general, if we're trying to calculate a fraction of two factorials, we could do something like this. So now let's consider the more general case. Let's suppose that we have something like 2k plus 1 factorial divided by 2k minus 1 factorial. So this sort of concept trips up a lot of people. So let's go through this kind of slowly. 2k plus 1 is just some number, right? So like if k was equal to 5, then the numerator would be... Um, 2 times 5 plus 1, which would be 11 factorial. And then the denominator would be 2k minus 1, so 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 9 factorial. 
And that's exactly the answer we got just before. So that's what happens whenever k is equal to 5. So in general, 2k plus 1 factorial should be thought of like this. It is 2k plus 1, that's the integer, times the next smallest integer. So if 2k plus 1 is just some number, the number that's smaller than 2k plus 1 is 2k. And the number smaller than that is 2k minus 1. All right, and then we could keep going all the way down to 3, 2, 1. On bottom, 2k minus 1 factorial is just 2k minus 1 times all the numbers smaller than it times 3 times 2 times 1. And as you might notice here, a lot of things cancel again. 2k minus 1, all of these interior things, and 3, 2, and 1. That all cancels. And so we're just left with 2k plus 1 times 2k. And if we wanted to distribute this out, we would get 4k squared plus 2k. All right, so that's the way to kind of think about this in general, is that uh, you would write out all of the terms from the numerator, all the terms from the denominator, and see what cancels out. All right, great. So next, let's do the proof of this limit as k to the 1 over k power equals 1. All right, so the way to go about doing this is to use L'Hopital's rule. So hopefully you remember some of this idea from calculus one. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as e to the natural log of k to the 1 over k. So remember if you take e and a natural log that doesn't change the value of the function so we can do that. The whole purpose of doing this is to rewrite it like this e. So if we have a natural log of something raised to a power right here, then we can bring that power out front of the natural log. So we have e to the 1 over k times the natural log of k. And one thing we know about a limit is that we can actually bring it inside of the exponent since e is just a number. So we could rewrite it like this. And let me rewrite this one more time, just for clarity. We can write this as the natural log of k divided by k. All right, so now here's the question. What is the limit as k approaches infinity of the natural log of k divided by k? Well, we could use L'Hopital's rule here. This is what we did in Calc 1. The derivative of the numerator is 1 over k. The derivative of the denominator is 1. Uh, one thing I should mention, the reason we're able to use L'Hopital's rule is because this yielded the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. And so L'Hopital's rule is indeed applicable. All right, and so now the limit of 1 over k over 1, that is just 0. So we have e to the 0, which is 1, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to show that this thing was equal to 1. So if you wanted to use this fact on an exam, on any sort of quiz, anything like that, you would have to show this work. All right? So that's the basic idea here. All right, so now let's consider the ratio test. So these are really powerful. And in my opinion, they're a lot easier to use than, say, the integral test or maybe the comparison tests. Uh, and one of the nice things about the ratio and root tests is that there are no conditions that we need to check beforehand to use them. 
So remember, whenever it came to the integral test, we had to check that it was positive, decreased, and continuous. For the comparison test, we had to check that the terms were positive and that uh, our comparison made sense. Um, for the um, alternating series test, we needed to check that the series was decreasing and that the limit was zero. Uh, for here, we can just use the ratio test and it will give us an answer most of the time. So here's the ratio test. We're going to let AK be an infinite series, sum of AK be an infinite series, and we're going to let R be equal to the limit as K approaches infinity of AK plus one divided by AK, all in absolute values. So we should kind of consider this R to be a sort of ratio, and we will consider how this works uh, a little bit more in the future. So if R is less than one, so here's the conclusions that we can reach. If R is less than one, then the series converges absolutely. Remember what it means for something to converge absolutely. It means that the sum of absolute value of AK converges. So that's what we are saying. All right, and so if it converges absolutely, then it just converges normally. We have a theorem for that. Similarly, if r is greater than 1, including r equals infinity, then the series diverges. And if r is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive, so we would have to try something else. So very simple. This is going to probably remind you of the ratio test because uh, it's got the same numbers. If r is less than 1, converges. If r is greater than 1, diverges. Uh, in this case, the uh, idea is that if r is equal to 1, it's inconclusive. So that's a little bit different than the um, geometric series test. Yeah, that's what I meant a second ago, the geometric series test, not the ratio test. OK, so let's do an example. We're going to use the ratio test to determine whether the following series converge, or converge absolutely or diverge, or we're going to state that the ratio test is inconclusive. So we have that we have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 10 to the k over k factorial. So let's use the ratio test. I think it's always a good idea to say what you're using up top. So first of all, ak is 10 to the k divided by k factorial. And we should think about what ak plus 1 is. Well, every, every place we see a k, we're just going to replace it with k plus 1. All right, so now let's take a limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of a k plus 1 divided by a k. Remember, that's what it tells us to take ak plus 1 over ak. Alright, so ak plus 1 is 10 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. And then if we divide by ak, that is the same thing as multiplying by k factorial divided by 10 to the k. All right, so we can rewrite this a little bit to make it nicer. 10 to the k plus 1 is the same thing as 10 to the k times 10 to the 1. k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. Or we could think of this as k plus 1 times k k factorial, right? Because we have k plus 1 times k times k minus 1 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. That's the same thing as just k plus 1 times k factorial. All right. And what you might notice at this point is that a lot of things cancel. Specifically, the 10 to the k's cancel. 
We have a k factorial up here and a k factorial down here, so those cancel. And we are just left with I should erase that. We are just left with a limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of 10 over k plus 1. Uh, at this point, we could drop the absolute values if we wanted to because we notice everything inside is always positive. But what you'll notice is that on top we have a number, on bottom we have a power of k, and so this thing is just zero. And zero is less than one. So this thing will converge absolutely. Let's write that to the side. Since r equals zero, which is less than one, The series sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 10 to the k over k factorial converges absolutely by the ratio test. And we're done. We didn't have to check any preconditions. We just took a limit and found that it was 0, which is less than 1, so it converges absolutely. Great. Let's do another example. Uh, this time, we have the sum from k equals 1738 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times k to the k over k factorial. All right, so one thing you might notice is this time we have negative 1 to the k, but that doesn't throw us off at all. We don't care if we have positive or negative terms. We can still use the ratio test. So let's define a k as negative 1 to the k times k to the k all over k factorial. Then a k plus 1 is equal to negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k plus 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 factorial. Once again, we're using the ratio test. And we're going to take the same limit. Let me define it to be r. R is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of a k plus 1 over a k. a k plus 1 is this giant thing, negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k plus 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 factorial. And then if we divide by a k, we're going to get k factorial over negative 1 to the k times k to the k. All right, so this time, some things will cancel out and some things won't. Let's try and see what will and will not cancel out. So the first observation you should make is that since we have an absolute value, this negative 1 to the k plus 1 and this negative 1 to the k both basically turn into 1 because of the absolute value. So these can go away. Let's think about those as just 1. All right. So we can rewrite our limit. OK, so in the numerator, we have k plus 1 to the k plus 1. We could rewrite that as k plus 1 to the k times k plus 1. And then we also have a multiple of k factorial 
and the denominator we have k plus 1 factorial so that can be written as just k plus 1 times k factorial and we have k to the k which I'm just gonna copy over this time several things still cancel out specifically k plus 1 k plus 1 these k factorials and we are just left with k plus 1 to the k over k to the k. So let's write that down. k plus 1 to the k power all over k to the k power. Uh, at this point we can drop the absolute values because there's no longer anything inside our absolute values that could be negative. These k's are always positive numbers. And we also have both um, the numerator and denominator raised to the k power. So remember the rule that if you have um, a to the k over b to the k, we can rewrite that as a over b to the k power. So we can rewrite this as k plus 1 over k, all raised to the k power. And this should hopefully look somewhat familiar, uh, because this is something that we looked at at the beginning of this section. This limit is equal to e. All right, so this limit is equal to e. Um, what is our conclusion then? Let's look back at the ratio test. It says if r is less than 1, series converges absolutely. But if r is greater than 1, then the series diverges. E is approximately 2.7. 2.7, which is greater than 1. So this will diverge. So let's write this down. Since r equals e, which is greater than 1, the series sum from k equals 1738 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k to the k, or times k to the k over k factorial diverges by ratio test. Okay, um, one other note that I'm going to make is the fact that this started at k equals 1738 made absolutely no difference, right? We can start at any integer k that we want to. So uh, at no point did we ever use the fact that it started at 1738. And in fact, I'm pretty sure for every series test that we ever do, it doesn't matter where we start. All right, great. So now let's consider this example where we have k squared minus 1 over k squared plus 1. So um, we are going to use the ratio test to determine whether this thing converges, diverges, or we're going to state that the ratio test is inconclusive. Um, before we do that, I want you to think about another test that you might use to determine whether this thing converges or diverges. All right? I won't say exactly what I'm thinking, but I want you to think about it, what you would use first if you were just given this problem and not told what test to use. All right. So if we wanted to use the ratio test, let's give it a shot. We define a k to be, whoops, let me erase that, to be k squared minus 1 over k squared plus 1, and a k plus 1. So every spot we see a k, we replace with k plus 1. So we get k plus 1 quantity squared minus 1 divided by k plus 1 quantity squared plus 1. All right, so now we're going to take this limit, 
we define r to be the limit as k approaches infinity of a k plus 1 over a k. And so this is going to be k plus 1 quantity squared minus 1 divided by k plus 1 quantity squared plus 1. And we are going to multiply this thing by 1 over a k, which is k squared plus 1 divided by k squared minus 1. All right, so we could multiply this all out. One thing we could do is we could distribute this k plus 1 squared. Uh, we could subtract minus 1, and then we could multiply it and distribute by k squared plus 1. Um, but this whole thing here is going to lead us to an answer of 1. So think about why that is. The largest power in the numerator for k would be 4. We would end up with k to the fourth after we expand everything out. The largest power in the denominator after we expand everything out and multiply it would also be 4. The coefficients for those two terms would be 1. And so because the, coef or because the powers are the same, we take the ratio of their coefficients, which is just 1 over 1, and so we get 1 as an answer. Since we got 1 as an answer, the ratio test is inconclusive. Inconclusive. So we would have to use some other test. So the test that I would recommend that we use for this thing to determine whether it converges or diverges is the divergence test. And if we just take the limit, so this is the divergence test, take the limit as k approaches infinity of just k squared minus 1 over k squared plus 1, we get 1. And that is not 0. So by the divergence test, the series diverges. All right, so this is an example where the ratio test fails, and we have to end up trying something else. Uh, in this case, notice that the ratio test, or sorry, notice that this summoned, the thing inside the sum, is um, a rational function. It is some polynomial divided by another polynomial. And so that indicates, uh, or, or so in this case, the ratio test failed. And in fact, for any rational function, the ratio test will fail. All right, so there are several helpful conclusions uh, to make about the ratio test. It's useful for a vast array of problems, and here are some things to think about it. First of all, the r that we find can be thought of as a common ratio between successive terms as k gets larger. So if r is equal to the limit of a k plus 1 over a k, you should just think of that as the, the ratio between the next term divided by the current term. So it's just kind of like a ratio. And so that's why um, the sum diverges if r is greater than 1, and it converges if r is less than 1. It's very similar to the geometric series test. All right. And then if there is ever something that is a k to the k term or an exponential, so something like b raised to the k power where b is just some number, or a factorial, something like k factorial or k plus 1 factorial or something like that, if you have any of these terms, then that's a strong indication that the ratio test 
might be needed. Uh, and in fact, almost every time you see a k factorial or any sort of factorial, you should go to the ratio test. That is like your go-to option. Anything else will probably make you sad because you won't be able to come up to a conclusion. All right. And the ratio test will provide no conclusion for rational functions, as I mentioned just a second ago. So remember, a rational function is one polynomial divided by another polynomial. So you'll need to use another test, like the limit comparison test or the divergence test. And if r is anything other than 1, so if it's 0, infinity, 5, negative, or 1 half, uh, then that's going to either tell us that the series converges absolutely or that the series diverges. There is never a case that uh, the ratio test will conclude conditional convergence. So remember, the um, ratio test basically just says that it converges absolutely or it diverges. Um, and so if it falls into one of those categories, it cannot conditionally converge. Okay, so the last series test that we are going to discuss in Calculus 2 is called the root test, and it is actually very similar to the ratio test, um, but it is slightly stronger. But for your purposes, you should think that the ratio and the root tests are essentially equivalent. So the root test is as follows. We are now going to let AK be an infinite series, and we are going to define rho, so that's a rho, not a p, we're going to define rho to be the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of a k. So this is not a square root, this is a kth root. This is the same thing as if we were to say absolute value of a k raised to the 1 over k power. That is the same thing. And then if rho is less than 1, so the conclusions are as follows. If rho is less than 1, series converges absolutely, and therefore it converges. If rho is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And if rho is equal to 1, then the root test is inconclusive. These are exactly the same as the ratio test, just with rho instead of r, and we define it to be different. So um, that's helpful because, you know, it's the same general idea. Let's do some examples. We're going to use the root test now to determine if this thing converges, diverges, or if the test is inconclusive. So um, here we don't need to worry about defining a k and a k plus 1. We can just say that rho, so let me say that I'm using the root test, rho is the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of 3 minus 4k squared divided by 7k squared plus 6 raised to the k power, close the absolute value. This absolute value is important. Make sure that you have that. All right, so here is the thing to think about. The kth root and the kth power cancel out. So those go away. And we are just left with the limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of 3 minus 4k squared over 7k squared plus 6. All right, and the solution to this limit, as you might guess, is 4 sevenths. So the reason it is not negative fourth sevenths, one might think that we have this negative here, so it should be negative four sevenths, but since you have the absolute value on the outside of everything, uh, that negative four sevenths becomes positive four sevenths. 
Uh, and the reason that we know that it's 4 7 once again, is because the powers of k uh, in the numerator and denominator are both 2, so we consider the ratio of their coefficients. All right, so 4 7 last I checked, is indeed less than 1. This is less than 1, so... Um, because rho is equal to 4 sevenths, which is less than 1, the series, wow, I cannot write, the, oh my god, series, Three minus four k squared over seven k squared plus six. That whole thing squared um, converges absolutely by the root test. All right, and we're done. That's, that's all we need to do. Um, so the thing to notice here is that the root test is applicable, or is really useful, I should say, when you have your thing, your uh, series, raised to a k power. So in this case, we had our entire summand raised to the kth power, which indicates that the root test would simplify our calculation considerably. All right, let's try one where it's slightly different, but it still works. In this case, you're going to notice that the denominator is raised to the k power, but the numerator is not. So we'll see how that plays out in just a second. In this case, we are going to once again use the root test. We define rho to be the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of k divided by negative 2 to the k power. All right, so one thing I like to do whenever I'm writing a problem like this is to um, rewrite this kth root as just a 1 over k power. So we're going to write it like this. This is k over negative 2 to the k raised to the 1 over k power. So, once again, if you have something where it is a over b raised to the 1 over k power, okay, I don't know why it got so thick, this is equal to um, a uh, to the 1 over k divided by b to the 1 over k. All right, so in that case, we have that this is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of k to the 1 over k divided by, so this is still an absolute values, and we can split the absolute value between the top and the bottom. Don't have to, but we can. All right, so what you will notice here is that the k power and the 1 over k power in the denominator actually cancel out. That just becomes 1. And we have absolute value of negative 2 on the bottom, which is just 2. All right, on the top, we can drop the absolute values because all the k's are positive. So we get the limit as k approaches infinity of k to the 1 over k divided by 2. 
All right, and if you remember from the first slide, the limit as k approaches infinity of k to the 1 over k is equal to 1. So this thing is just 1 half. On an exam, you would have to prove that the limit of k to the 1 over k is 1. So on exam, prove this is 1. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I won't do that here. We already did that on the second slide of this section, so just go back and check that. So this whole thing is equal to 1 half. 1 half is less than 1. So by the root test, the series converges. Now let's use a different color. Since row equals 1 half, which is less than 1, um, the series sum from k equals 1 to infinity. I'm writing this out every time just so that way you guys get in the habit of recognizing that you need to. Um, this thing converges absolutely by the root test. All right, and this final example, let's take a look at it. This time you'll notice that we don't have k as our exponent, but k squared as our exponent. So notice that this is not 2k as an exponent, this is k squared. And so let's give it a shot. So we're using the root test again. We define rho to be limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of the absolute value of 1 plus 3 over k to the k squared power close the absolute value. All right, so the kth root and that k squared power interact in some way. Let's think about how they interact. What is, so if you have, you know, something like this, let's say this is just a to the k power times, or this k squared power times 1 over k, uh, then what you're basically doing is you have to multiply these two powers together. So we're multiplying k squared times 1 over k, and we would just get a to the k. And so that's what we're left with here. We have k squared and 1 over k multiplied together to give us just All right, we can drop the absolute values here because there's nothing that can make our thing negative. And so we are just left with limit as k approaches infinity of 1 plus 3 to the k, or sorry, 1 plus 3 over k to the k power. And what is this equal to? Think about it. All right, this is equal to e cubed. Remember, because if we have 1 plus a over k raised to the bk power, and we're taking the limit of that as k goes to infinity, that thing is just e to the ab. All right, and so that thing is just e cubed, and e cubed is greater than 1, so this thing should diverge. Uh, so because rho equals e cubed, which is greater than 1. 
the series. Diverges by the Rooty Tutti test. Oh gosh, okay. So we're done. Uh, yeah. So the root test was super helpful here because we had a k squared power, and then whenever we multiply that by 1 over k, it simplifies our limit considerably. All right, so here are some helpful conclusions. The root test is very similar to the ratio test. You'll notice that the conditions were essentially the same, where it was either r or rho that we were considering. Um, but technically, the root test is actually slightly stronger than the ratio test. Uh, there are some series for which the ratio test is inconclusive, but the root test yields a solution, yields a conclusion. Um, but those examples are really obscure, and you actually won't see those in this class. So um, for the purposes of this class, you should just consider the root test and the ratio test to be essentially equivalent. Anything you can do with the root test, you can do with the ratio test. Um, so the main thing that I want you guys to take away is that the root test should be used whenever you have powers of k or something similar inside of your summon, summoned. Uh, summoned is just the thing that's inside your sum. And then the ratio test should be used every other instance. So if you don't see a power of k or k squared or one of your things is raised to the k power, then you should just consider using ratio test. So ratio test should be your default option. All right, these two tests are great. You're gonna love them a lot more than you probably should. And that's all I've got for you. I'll see you in the next section.